What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Ultra 2. This blaster shoots the new Ultra rounds. I have a whole standalone video on this new projectile in the series in general. You might want to watch that video if you don't know what Ultra is. But the Ultra 2 is a flywheel powered, semi auto, revolver fed pistol blaster in the Ultra series. Let's get into the review. Included is the blaster, a few Ultra darts, and the instructions. This blaster requires six AA batteries and are installed as shown. External overview of the Ultra 2, starting up at the front. Of course, there's no in-strike barrel lug. This is an Ultra Blaster, not an Elite Blaster. Up top, we have an in-strike tactical rail, and down below, we have another in-strike tactical rail. Even if you don't put anything on them, they look cool, so I dig it. Thanks, Hasbro. On the left-hand side is the battery tray. This battery tray is a little unique. It runs on six AA batteries. So the first four batteries go in sort of like normal, but then the last two go on top of the bottom two. I haven't seen a battery tray like this before. I've rattled this considerably, and I have not disabled the contacts. It's always been able to turn on, but it's worth pointing out because I I haven't seen a battery tray like that. Moving on, over here is the access door. To get in here, you open up this flap like that. I had a number of malfunctions that I actually had to get my finger in there, so I'm glad the access door was there. Now back to the cylinder and the loading system, which is the coolest part of this blaster, hands down. So this is an open cylinder, but it's in the back of the blaster. If you've ever seen a cylinder like this, it's typically pointed forward, like in a Maverick or a strong arm. So to load, you put in the rounds just like this. You just pop them in there. And the cylinder here moves relatively freely, so you can spin it around to open up the barrels to load more easily. I love this loading system. This is super cool. Like, I don't know if it's because I'm an American, but I grew up and I wanted to be a cowboy or like a sheriff, you know? Like, you feeling lucky? Whoosh, like that kind of sheriff. Like, that's just what I wanted to be as a kid. And this totally got me into that zone. Loading this blaster, like lowering it by your hip like this and kind of dropping it in, I kind of felt like all of the sheriffs in all of the Western movies ever. Backloading is a little different, but it works. It's very cool and definitely unique. But moving on with the overview, back here we have a sling mount right here. We have another one at the bottom of the grip. Now down to the triggers. This is a flywheel power blaster, so you want to hold the rev trigger for a moment before pr pulling the primary trigger. And the primary trigger feels a little busy because you're rotating the cylinder and injecting the dart. It doesn't quite feel like a strife. So it's a little busy. It's not as smooth, but it works just fine. However, this rev trigger is the worst rev trigger I've ever put my finger on. This is just awful. I shot about 800 to 1,000 rounds through this blaster for my testing procedure. And after the first 100 rounds, I had to set it down and I had to keep setting it down and coming back to it because my hand was just getting so sore. This rev trigger is just awful. More on that in my opinion. And down to the grip, it's a smaller than average grip. This is not a super comfortable grip. This whole blaster feels a little weird. It works, the rev trigger just ruins the ergonomics completely, but the grip is acceptable if the rev trigger gets filed down. That is an external overview of the Ultra 2. Let's see it fire. Shooting Nerf Ultra rounds. Operating the Ultra 2 was definitely a mixed experience because I really liked some features, mainly this back loading turret system, but other features like this really uncomfortable rev trigger and just these Ultra darts um, kind of ruined the experience for me. But for jams and malfunctions, I had a number of malfunctions. They were very easy to clear and they weren't like total catastrophic like jams. But a number of times I pulled the trigger and it just seized up. The dart kind of got caught in the flywheel. So I opened up the access door. You just inch your finger in, push it back a little bit, spin the cylinder and refire and it clears the jam very rapidly. but I had that kind of malfunction maybe one out of 20 or 30 shots, which is pretty frequent. But that's the only type of malfunction I had with this blaster and it's pretty easy to fix. However, if you paid attention to the trajectory of the Ultra 2, it is just as bad as the Ultra 1. These darts do not get launched consistently. When I'm firing, some of them would be launched like 10 degrees off to the right, some of them to the left, like it was so hard to hit stuff. After the Ultra dart is launched, it is relatively stable. It doesn't fishtail quite as much as an elite dart. However, if the ammo is not launched consistently, it doesn't matter how consistent that the ammo 
ammo is if the blaster is just shooting them out all over the place. So when you pull the trigger on a Strife, sometimes they shoot out left and right, but not nearly as wild as the, these Ultra Blasters. So accuracy and performance and consistency, terrible. But just like the Ultra 1, I'm gonna blame the AR ammo, because these darts just, why? And to test the firing velocity, I put the Ultra 2 up on my chronograph, and I achieved an average velocity of 92 feet per second, which is a whole lot faster than the Ultra 1, 75 feet per second. I don't know what the average is. You can't really draw an average off of two samples, but this shoots way harder than the Ultra 1. Uh, you still can't hit anything because it doesn't shoot in a straight line, but it shoots harder, so you, you got that. The occasional hiccup with the firing mechanism, but it's pretty simple to fix, so you know, it gets in the way, um, but it's not too bad. Other than that, the performance analysis really comes down to the Ultra Darts. I think it's the weakest part of this product. I don't support the Ultra Series. I don't think you should buy an Ultra Blaster, including this one, just because of these unnecessary pointless darts that don't need to be in the universe. They contribute nothing. So that's really the firing analysis. Most of the performance comes down to the darts, which I really don't like. That is more or less the objective information I can provide on this product. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, my personal opinion on this product is pretty bad. Very few people should purchase this blaster. Let me explain. My biggest beef with the Ultra 2 is that it's an Ultra Blaster. I don't think these darts need to exist in the world. They are not better for the consumer. The only people they benefit is Hasbro's profit margin. But if you want a performance nerf blaster, buy a Rival Blaster or just buy an Elite Blaster like everybody else. You don't need to buy an Ultra Blaster. They don't fill any role at all. But the firing performance out of this blaster and the Ultra 1 are just awful. Too many of the darts shoot way off center. Like it's really hard to hit anything. Sure, once the dart gets going, it doesn't fishtail quite as much as an Elite Dart. But if the launcher doesn't launch consistently, you still can't hit anything. So you're better off using the Elite Blaster firing Waffle Head Darts, like off-brand Waffle Head Darts or Accustrike Darts. Or a Rival Blaster, because those are super accurate. But these things fly all over the place and they're expensive. I can't recommend you buy any Ultra Blaster ever, pretty much. But I would like to praise this rear-loading cylinder design because it was super fun to use. I really felt like a Western Sheriff. I know the emotional response you have to a product isn't what all of my viewers look for, but if you're a cosplayer or you just derp around with Nerf guns because you don't really care about winning, that's actually like really important to you. And I had a lot of fun rear-loading this. It's just a cool loading design. It's a lot of fun to load up and use. So I have to praise them for this new cool design. However, this rev trigger, they, how many rev triggers has Hasbro manufactured? Have they ever messed one up? This is the worst one I've ever touched. It juts into your finger, it's very uncomfortable, and it really diminishes the play experience. If you pick it up, shoot it for five minutes, and forget it exists, maybe it's not a big deal, but if you play with the blaster for a prolonged period of time, the ergonomics and the comfort of the blaster are very important. But again, like I said, if you get a Dremel, you sand it down, problem solved, so I don't know how much complaining I should really do about it. So to buy or not to buy, if you're a normal nerfer or a performance nerfer, or you care at all if your dart hits the target, I do not recommend you purchase this blaster or the Ultra 1. These darts are just not worth it. I can't recommend any performance nerfers purchase one. I'd recommend a Rival Blaster or an Elite Blaster shooting Waffle Head darts. Where I think this Ultra 2 design might shine is cosplayers or people that are just looking to derp around and get that emotional experience like you're playing cowboy, you're dressing up, you're in your imagination instead of reality because the reality of this product is subpar. It's just not fun at all but imagination's limitless. So if you want to feel like an Old West Sheriff, this is the best Nerf Blaster I can think of to feel like one. I've never actually felt like a Sheriff before until I used this and I was like, you feeling lucky? Without even realizing what was happening, I was like, wow, I'm a Sheriff, this is awesome. <laughs> so I had a ton of fun with that. And Hasbro, if you watch my reviews, pretty, pretty please use this design in the Elite series. An Elite version of this Blaster would be so much fun. It could be a slightly slimmer because of the slightly slimmer darts, which would make it just a little bit easier to fit in a holster. This isn't wide by any means, but an Elite version would be slightly smaller. It would be lighter because you'd only need four double A's instead of six double A's. You could definitely fix this grip with a standard elite grip instead of this weird chode ultra grip. It's not terribly comfortable in this rev trigger. Golly, please don't do that again. But like the strife grip and trigger unit with a rear loading cylinder like this, that would be such a cool blaster to hold in a holster. And I'd go out of my way to buy one of those old fashioned leather holsters to feel like a cowboy in the West. <laughs> so I'm not trying to be super negative. I wanna praise that design, it's very cool. I just think it would be super disappointing if it's exclusive to the garbage series of Ultra. I really want this to be implemented into the Elite series. But to buy or not to buy again, performance nerfers, absolutely not. If you're a cosplayer and you wanna feel like a sheriff, it's a fun blaster to use if you can get over this rev trigger. And of course, not being able to hit anything that you point your barrel at, but you know, it's ultra. What do you expect? <laughs> So mixed opinion and kind of a scattered review. Sorry, I have a head cold, my B. That concludes my review of the Ultra 2 Blaster. If you'd like to purchase one, I'll have a buy link in the description box below. That's it for this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.